we are Christians and we are Americans and we are going to get through these times. And we're going to look back and we're going to remember these times all of our lives, for the rest of our lives. And we might even be grateful. I grew up in Texas, a Southern Baptist. Um, our first church was uh, First Baptist Downtown, which I still have memories of of going to. And my mother was still a member of uh, Downtown Baptist Church. That pastor there uh, spoke at her at at her funeral. But I uh, mainly we moved to Bel Air, Texas, which was a suburb of that town. We went to First Baptist Bel Air, and it's where I went to Sunday school as well, and where I got baptized. But remember the uh, it was the the little league baseball assistant coach came to see my brother Randy over at the house when he was he was thirteen, and I guess I was nine, and uh about came to talk to him about Randy getting baptized. And I, I, I was in uh, the other room where we kind of watched TV, but I, I was really listening to what the coach was, was saying to Randy. And by that, I decided to get baptized myself. So we both went up the same Sunday and uh, we were baptized on, on the at the same day. I think about a week later, there was a real strong foundation of uh, of faith that, especially my mother, uh, gave us, and uh, it's really been the rock of my entire life. Uh, and sometimes I've re you know, rebelled against it. I've certainly I've had you know my crisis crises of faith uh, in my life as well, but I keep coming back to the red words of Jesus. Uh, and every time I read the Bible, which is now uh, uh, going on my the fourth time in my life, it reveals itself to me in a very different, expanded, uh, incredible way uh, that uh, it's always bringing something new and mm -hmm. something that uh, is just the truth. I remember I, I, I got disenchanted, I think, in, uh, in the 60s uh, and 70s uh, with, with, uh, with, I don't know, Christianity, but with, with religion in general, I think. And because it didn't seem to answer a lot of questions that I had. I kind of went shopping, or if you want to call it that, or, you know, I started I started studying uh, all the religions, I, I, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam. I, you know, I've read all the books, read everything. And I even went around the world at that time and uh, in, my, in my 20s. And my question was to just uh, random people around the world was, who is God to you? You know, I was a seeker. That's what I was, really. But in the end, after all my struggles uh, and everything, and my mom was always right there with me, you know, to debate, to talk, to discuss, whatever, in a very non-judgmental way. But in the end, it was, it was the red words of Jesus that really brought me back. There was a personal relationship that I think I actually finally found, not think, I know I actually finally found with Jesus Christ. And that's really what it's all about. I remember my mom saying to me so many times, you know, you know the world may change, but God's law doesn't change. And it's really so true. I found it, I find it to be a source of strength now in my life. When I got out of, uh, rehab for uh, for cocaine that uh, uh, that I was hooked on back in the 80s and uh, finally got that out of my life and uh I you know my mom had had uh, really been 
with me and really suffered because of worrying about me, I think, through, through all of that. But she was always there for me. And uh, I wrote, so I wrote the song really dedicated to her, but it, it's about, uh, it's about being free of uh, the change of my own created bondage, you know, uh, very much the prodigal son who came home and it's called <laughs> On My Way to Heaven. And basically, the the verse is uh, my my life may not be roses, but still I'm gonna be all right, long as I have my Savior by my side. He freed me from these heavy chains that had bound my broken heart, picked me up and gave me a brand new start. Now I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven. On my way to heaven. So I can't be staying long. I, I just can't believe uh, how it happened. We recorded that last year, and, and uh, I gave her that that cut as a as a as a last birthday present to her. You have to be present in the present moment, the talking with God, because there you will find God's presence. And when when something wonderful happens, the first thing I do is say thank you, God, thank you, Jesus, for this. And that brings them into the present moment. And I know who's responsible for that. When I need, like, I quit smoking th three months ago. And, uh, you know, I've tried before in life and have quit smoking before. But uh, this time I quit and I had absolutely, I've had absolutely zero urges. And every time I uh, did, uh, it would come up or even the thought of, of a cigarette, I would say, I would just immediately call out. Uh, you know, it, it's the shortest prayer there is, is help me, Lord. And, and he's right there. You know, as an actor, you know, you go from job to job and you never quite get over that feeling of like, I may never work again. You know, you, I'll work on a movie for, for three months and then I'm out of work. And I have a couple of months sometimes to uh, be waiting around for that so i'm kind of used to staying at home but uh, you know been uh, like working out and staying healthy trying to keep like a regular routine you know making sure that, that the kids get into their uh, online school and uh but just trying to keep my routine as 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 normal as possible and also mm -hmm. just getting up and getting dressed it's one mm -hmm. thing to sit around in your you know pajamas for a couple of days that's great everybody loves that but after a while, I think it starts to work on your mind a little bit. The Denisons, my podcast, I've been able to actually do it at home uh, remotely, just like we're doing this interview now. And along with that, we have started a podcast platform called Audio Up that we have been planning for well over a year, and our launch was to be April 1st. Turns out you couldn't have a better time to... Uh, to start a podcast platform because of uh, nobody could be on a movie set. And it's about the only thing going in, in uh, show business right now. So uh, I've been keeping myself really busy with that. I think there's going to be a, a spiritual awakening. I think it's already started to happen. The spiritual awakening. You know, the, the world has chugged along since the industrial revolution, you know, going back into the, early 19th century just getting busier and busier all the time and all of a sudden it came to a screeching halt like never before in history and it uh so it's it's forcing us to change people are always dragged kicking and screaming into change we hardly ever do that willingly and this is it's 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 times like this that will make you stop and ask mm -hmm. questions like who am I what is my purpose maybe I'm not just this job and and who I think I am and and also makes us realize how helpless we really are here how not in control we are and and you could have some time to feel the presence of God in your life and God is right there in this moment to help you through it. Here's a passage from Jesus Calling, dated November 25th, that I hope 
will encourage you today. Thank me frequently as you journey through today. This practice makes it possible to pray without ceasing, as the Apostle Paul taught. If you are serious about learning to pray continually, the best approach is to thank me in every situation. These thankful prayers provide a solid foundation on which you can build all your other prayers. Moreover, a grateful attitude makes it easier for you to communicate with me. When your mind is occupied with thanking me, you have no time for worrying or complaining. If you practice thankfulness consistently, negative thought patterns will gradually grow weaker and weaker. Draw near to me with a grateful heart, and my presence will fill you with joy and peace. Hard times, they really bring out uh, the truth of our relationships with with others who are close to you know, the issues that are there. It's kind of like our 40 days in the desert right now, is it not? We're all going to come through this. There's going to be, we're already one day closer to uh, being able to get back to our lives, get back to our work, get back to our relationships and and the things we do in life. And we're all in this together. Try to use this time to pray, to really deal with what's going on inside you. And if, if, you, if you're afraid, f focus on that fear that you're... You're sitting here right now and you're you're okay and you're all right and your fears are just like or basically fears of the future of the unknown but just try to, to to be in this moment here right now and and know that you're all right and that there is going to be an end to this mm -hmm.